programmes are based on the three core subjects of the national curriculum. They will help parents to understand how their children are now being educated so that they can help their children practice the skills that they are being taught through activities at home. The subjects are divided at school into a number of areas and each of these are subdivided into attainment targets which teachers use to plan lessons and assess pupils as they work throughout the school term. Within these attainment targets there are a number of levels. The children start work at level one and climb as high as they can during their time at school. For example, the top maths level is 10. Some children will move quickly through these levels, others will take more time. Don't worry if your child goes a little slower or quicker up this ladder of achievement. Between the ages of 7 to 11 is called Key Stage 2 and there will be a national assessment at the end of this and all the other key stages at the ages of 7, 11, 14 and 16. Now parents and teachers will share how well their children and students are doing against a set standard and these assessment tests are simply a means of achieving this. My name is Kate Weston, and this is Michael. Hi. Nadia. Hello. Lisa. Hello. And Rocky. Hi. Together we're going to have fun learning, and you can too. There's not a great deal of difference between the things that they enjoy doing today and the things that I enjoyed doing when I was their age. Though I didn't have a personal stereo, of course, or a skateboard, but I loved doing that. Something old and something new. Like the methods we're using to educate our young ones, the best of the old hand in hand with the new. This video sets out to discover the way in which today's 8 to 11 year olds are learning their mathematical skills. Dennis Bond is a primary school teacher who's been involved with the changeover from the old methods of teaching maths to the new. Dennis, are the things that children learn today so very different from, say, 10 years ago? Well, the skills are the same, Kate. It's the way in which these skills are taught which are different. But, for instance, children nowadays wouldn't learn their tables by chanting them, would they? Like this. One, six, to six, two, six, There's nothing to wrong with that, Kate. They've still three, got to know their tables. Eight, Hold four. on. Just so long as they know the meaning behind the chanting. That's vitally important. For instance. One lot of three is three. Two lots of three are six. One, one three is three. Two, two three is six. Thank three, you. Six. Lisa, Nadia and Rocky have joined us in our maths project. A project in which we aim to include some of the mathematical skills that children of their age should be working on. Don't forget me. And this is Michael. Hi. The project is just an idea which enables us to practice our mathematical skills in an enjoyable way. An end which justifies the means. We do it by way of planning something planning a holiday, or a day at the seaside, or a visit to a museum. After you've watched this video, you might have some of your own ideas. So, what's our project to be then, kids? Well, it's Michael's birthday next Saturday. Really? Yeah, and his mum said we can have a party for 15. Yeah. So that's my project. My party? Yes? Yes, yeah, a good idea. Arranging a celebration. Any celebration would do. Arranging a celebration. Planning Michael's birthday party. But is it maths? I like collecting data because it means I can go around to all my friends and ask them questions. How much pocket money do you get? Do you like going to the cinema or would you rather watch a video at home? What's your favourite breakfast cereal? You have to use the information to make the graph. <laughs> Planning a celebration. First things first, 
The first thing to do is to collect all the data, all the information that's needed to plan Michael's birthday party. So, Michael, what have you come up with? My mum says I can have a party, um, 15 of us at home, including our friends. But she's given us £20 so we can go somewhere else first. Like? To see a film. I want to go bowling. I don't. Well, what do you want to do, Nadia? I'd like to go swimming. Rocky? I don't mind. Swimming, I suppose. I wonder what you'd like to do. Michael's made a list of possibilities. We could go bowling, swimming, to see a film, the zoo, a picnic, or we could go for something to eat, like a burger. And we've got 15 coming of us, including our friends. So we've asked each of them what they like to do. Six possibilities and 15 people. So how are you going to find out which is the most popular choice? Make a graph. Right. And this can be done on paper or on the computer. The old method or the new. I'll use the computer. Can I work with Rocky? Yeah, of course you can. So Lisa and Rocky are working together on their graph. Michael, you can do your graph on your own. Yeah. And Nadia, you can do yours on the computer. Okay. And let's hope you all come up with the same solution. If you want to make a graph along with us, Note down the following data before you start. And if we're going too fast for you, stop the tape. Bowling, swimming, film, the zoo, a picnic, a meal out. Six choices. And 15 people choosing what to do. Six choices and 15 people. Right, what have we come up with? Rocky and Lisa, what does your uh, graph tell us here? Well, one person wants to go bowling, four people want to go swimming, five want to see a film, and nobody wants to go to the zoo because we've just been to the zoo with the school. Right. Three want a picnic, and two want to go and have a hamburger. Right, and um, your conclusion? The most popular choice was to see a film. Nadia? The same, it's a film. Michael? That's what I've got too. So that's settled then. A film it is. Uh, not quite, Kate. We've still got to collect more data. The graph shows us which is the most popular choice, but we don't know yet if that choice is going to be possible to take. It all depends on... The cost. The cost, right. How many of you? There's 15 of you and you've got £20. So, let's see if going to the cinema is possible. Well? One pound ninety each. We can't afford it. Are you sure? Yeah. What's fifteen one pound nineties? Uh, well, you know that one pound ninety is nearly two pounds. And there's fifteen of us times two, which is thirty. Thirty pounds. And we've only got twenty. What was the second choice of the group? Swimming, wasn't it? Yeah. Five wanted to go and see a film, and four wanted to go swimming. So, let's check the swimming bars. I've got an idea this is going to be cheaper than the cinema. Yeah. Do you guys swimming? You prefer yeah, that? Oh, yeah, I right, would. Well, I'm not so sure, actually. I don't think Michael was. I don't know what Michael actually wanted. How much? One pound each. Well, we'll have enough, because there's 15 of us at one pound each, so that's 15 pounds. And some money left over. Five pounds to buy crisps. We'll see. Back to the workshop. So, what have we discovered? Six choices. Bowling, swimming, a film, the zoo, a picnic, a meal out, and 15 people to choose. One wants to go bowling, four want to go swimming, five want to see a film, nobody wants to go to the zoo, three want to go on a picnic, and two want to go for a meal. The first choice was to see a film, but this was too expensive. So the next choice was swimming. So Rocky, planning an afternoon out, what do we have to do first? Discuss the possibilities. And if we don't all agree on the same thing? Make up a survey and find out what the people want to do. Right, collecting data, statistical information, then what? Draw up a graph and find out what's the most popular choice. And if the most popular choice is impossible to take for some reason, as in this case, the expense... 
then go for second choice. Good. So, start by collecting information. That's right, and put it into a form that's easy to read. And that's where computers come in, right? Yes, but there's plenty of opportunities to use pen and paper too, to make graphs and bar charts. How about some other examples to try out like that? Well, how about doing a survey of the kind of food that people like to eat best at parties? You can suggest a choice between sandwiches and cakes, sausages and beans, hamburgers and chips, a posh dinner party or a takeaway. I think it's important to multiply so that it'll help you later on in your life with working out bills. Times the £2.75 by 4. Divide 150 by 3. I would multiply by 4. If I had a hard maths question, I'd probably use a calculator. Me too. I could do it in my head. I couldn't do that. We've collected our information and made our graph. Now we have to work out our prices. So, We've gone for the second choice on our graph, swimming, because the first choice of the cinema was too expensive. I don't like swimming. But if everyone else wants to go, Lisa... I'll go too. But do they all want to go? Only four out of 15 made it their first choice. So why don't we work out all the prices and see what's possible and what isn't? Then we can go back to our 15 people, supply them with the new information and ask them to choose again. But how do we find out the prices for the bowling alley? They're miles away. Rocky, haven't you ever heard of a phone? <laughs> <laughs> right, what have we got? We didn't bother with the zoo because nobody wanted to go. The meal? It's one pound sixty-nine for the cheapest bag of chips and a drink. The picnic was a bit difficult to judge, but I think we should allow 75p each for every person. Well, that's just for the food. It'll cost us more if we have to travel somewhere. Can we have it in the park? Hmm. And Rocky's phone in the bowling alley right now. Thank you. Right. Hmm? Bowling. 50p entrance, 50p for hire of shoes, and £1.20 for a game. So let's work that all out, shall we? Bowling. Entrance fee, 50p. Hire of shoes, 50p. The game. One pound twenty. Total? Fifty P and fifty P make one pound. One pound and one pound twenty make two pound twenty. Right. Now two pound twenty times fifteen. Rocky, you can use the calculator. The rest of us can do it on paper. If you've got a calculator, fine. If not, use this. And a pen and paper, of course. Okay. So let's work it out. Fifteen lots of naught is naught. So that goes in the units. Then, 2 lots of 15 is 30. So that, the naught goes in the tens column, and the 3 is carried over to the hundreds. Then, you put in your decimal point. Then, 2 times 15 is 30. Put in the 3, that makes 33. That looks good to me. What does the calculator say, Rocky? 33 pounds. That's what Lisa's got. And me. Me too. And you? Right, so bowling will cost you £33, and you've got... £20. We haven't got enough. How short are we? 33 subtract 20 is 13. Now, swimming. A pound each, and there's 15 of us. £15. And we've got £20. Mm -hmm. Five pounds left over for crisps. The cinema? £1.90 each. Times 15. One pound 90 multiplied by 15 equals 28.50. And you've only got 20 pounds, so? We're 8 pounds 50 short. Right. The picnic. We allow 75p each. That's 15 times 75p. Right, let's work that one out. So you can afford to go for a picnic. 15 times 75p is £11.25. We'll have quite a bit left over. How much, Rocky? Well, 20 subtract 11.25 is £8.75. I'm sure your mum will be pleased to get all that change, Michael. Can't we buy some chocolate with it? <laughs> He's always on about food. And talking of food, the meal out. I've, I've got it here somewhere. Right. 
a burger is 69p, french fries is 50 pence, and a drink is 50p. How much? 69p, 50p, and 50p. It's £1.69 times 15. Which is £25.35p. Too much for us. So that's all the costing done. What have we got? Uh, the cinema. £28.50. Oh, so that's out. Uh, swimming. £15. Ooh, possibility. Mm -hmm. uh, bowling. £33. Mm, forget it. Uh, the picnic. £11.25. Another possibility. And finally, the meal out. Too expensive. It's £25.35p. So, to keep within our budget, it's swimming or the picnic. Let's go and ask them all to choose again. Uh, just a minute, Michael. Happy birthday, Michael. Oh, oh thanks. But his birthday isn't until Saturday. Well, happy early birthday. I couldn't get a birthday cake, so I thought these would do. And they're not all for you, Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There are eleven. I bought a dozen, but I ate one. So, help yourselves. Hold it, hold it. How many each? Eleven divided by six. I don't want one. Oh. And I've had all I want. Eleven divided by four, then. And four choose are eight, so that's two each. And three left over. Right, three to share between four. How do we work that one out? Three divided by four. Cut them in half. Does that help? Six divided by four. Does that help? Not really. So cut them in half again. Now each one of them is in quarters. Twelve quarters. That's better. Twelve divided by four. Three. Three quarters. Three quarters for me. Three quarters for me. Three quarters for me. Three quarters for me. So, each of you has... Two and three quarters. So, 11 divided by four is two and three quarters. Shall we go and do our second survey now? Why not? Rocky, it costs £2.75 to go to a disco and six friends are going. Yes. Right, how do you work out how much it would cost altogether? Multiply 275 by 6. On paper or by using a calculator? If I had a calculator, I'd use it. But if not, I'd use pen and paper. Right, supposing it costs £3 to go into a disco and there are 10 people? Multiply, th multiply 3 by 10. On a calculator or paper? In my head. Ah. Th 3 times 10 is 30. £30. Right. So, after the disco, you and five friends go for something to eat. And you're given the bill. And it comes to £7.20. So, how much does each person have to pay? Five friends and me. That's six. So, divide £7.20 by six. In your head? I'd probably do it on paper, unless I had a calculator with me. And if the bill was £12? In my head. Twelve divided by six is two. That's, so, that's £2 each. Right. Can I go now? Of course you can. I noticed that you encouraged Michael to use whatever method of calculation he thought appropriate. Of course, and though everyone should still be able to do a certain amount of mental arithmetic. Using a calculator, that seems like second nature too. It isn't cheating though, is it? Certainly not. It's now very much a part of schoolwork. But it's very important to know how a calculation is done, as well as being able to use the calculator. It's important to know how to measure things, because you may need to build something or draw something, and you'd need accurate measurements. You have to understand numbers if you want to measure things. Weight, length, how wide something is. You'd have to measure your friends to see how tall they were. A clock has numbers to tell you the time. The new information has been given to Michael's party guests. They've taken a vote and decided to go swimming before they go to the party. The party. Now we have to arrange that. The day. This Saturday. The place. My house. The time. Well, if we leave the swimming bars at five o'clock, we can be at your house by half past five. 
I'd like to go home to change first. And how long would that would take you, Nadia? Uh, quarter of an hour to get from the bath back home, uh, half an hour to get changed, and another half an hour, say, to get back to Michael's house again. Right, quarter of an hour, half an hour, and another half an hour. <coughs> quarter of an hour, 15 minutes, half an hour, 30 minutes, Half an hour, 30 minutes. Total, an hour and a quarter. 75 minutes. So, if you leave the bars at five o'clock, you could be at Michael's house by... Quarter past six. 6.15. So let's say the party starts at 6.15. Saturday, 6.15, at Michael's house. So, what time should everyone meet at the baths? At nine o'clock in the morning, so everyone can spend a the day there. <laughs> Don't be daft. Four o'clock. Right, so let's make our invitations. You could always buy invitation cards, but if you've got some card and felt tips, make your own. More maths, measuring. Let's see what we've got. We've got a large piece of card, and I need 15 invitations. I don't need one. It's my party. Right, so 14 invitations then. How do we get 14 invitations out of this piece of card? Um, cut it up into 14 bits. 14 equal bits. We want them all the same size. Right. So, what has to be done first? Measure the card and find out how big it is. Right, so off you go then. Along this side first of all and Thank see you. how far it is along here. You can do that. Nadia and Rocky, you can help with that. What bit shall I do? Michael, if you measure along the top here, or do it from the I'll bottom, the bottom end here. Right? You do the top. Was it 12? You want 12 invitations? I meant 12 across. Right, you just measure all the way along and find out how long the piece of card is and how high the piece of card is. How many centimetres is it? It's about 30. It's 30 up that way, you're right. And along Six. It's 60, you're right, Liz. Yes, it's perfect. Oh. 30 by 60. 60. So, what shape is it? Is it square? No. No, it's no. not square. Because not all the sides are the same. The top and the bottom are the same, and the two sides are the same. So it's a rectangle. Right, it's 60 centimetres by 30 centimetres, and we need 14 invitations. So, what next? Any ideas? If we needed 15, it would be easier, because then we could just measure three rows of five. And what if it was 16? Would that be easy? Four rows of four. So, why make it difficult for yourselves? Make three rows of five and waste one card, or four rows of four and waste two cards. I wonder which you would choose. Let's take a look. Divide the card into four rows. Then divide each row into four pieces. 16. We would waste two, like this. 14 invitations or divide the card into three rows then divide each row into five pieces 15 we would waste one like this 14 invitations look at them both the choice is yours which do you prefer i like three rows of five why because the invitation is bigger, and we'd only waste one. Do you all agree? Yeah. yeah. Right, so what's the next move, then? Find out the size of each invitation. How? Measure along the top of the card, and that comes 60 centimetres. Then divide it into five. Which is? 12 fives of 60, 12, si 12 centimetres. Let's do it. Great.
Great. Now what? We cut along the lines. Right, so, Rocky, you can do it first. Get your scissors and let's cut along the lines very carefully. Yes? Steady, follow that line very carefully. Mm. Good, good, good. Well, uh, right. Oh, you're going to do right the way along? It's fine. Let's do one invitation at a time, shall we? So yeah. now let's go up from this way. That's it. OK? Yep. Good, our first invitation. Steady, well done. Right, 15 pieces of card and one left over. On these, we have to write neatly our invitations, stating the day, the time, the place, and the fact that it's Michael's birthday. But we're going to do it in pencil first, very lightly, pencil and ruler, to measure out where we want to put the writing to start and end. So what you're going to do is this. When you're absolutely sure that everything's in the right place, then you can go over your pencil with a felt tip or with a pen. Now, what you're going to do is start at the edge here. Work out that you want a border somewhere, probably here, and probably a border here, here and here. If you start too far in here, you're not going to have enough room. You're going to run out at the end here and have your words coming over the edge. So what you do is you could work very carefully, very, very carefully, lightly in pencil, to make sure your words don't go over the edge and they all fit in. Same with the top, same with the bottom. All right? OK. OK. All right. Let's see if you make a... Let's get rid of that one we don't want. Now we've got 15. <laughs> All right, off you go. Should we write first? Measure out just order. measure very carefully first. Well, you can do it with a ruler if you like, or just have a rough guess at it. I would, yes, I would use one centimetre. I would go in one centimetre and just put a very, very light dot. One centimetre in, probably, and one centimetre down to give it a nice border. Well, haven't you done well? They've all done smashing invitations. This is Lisa's one. I think that's really good, but you've all done wonderful invitations. Well done. Excellent. Michael, you need 15 invitations and you've got one piece of card. What do you do? I'd measure the, I would measure the card and divide it into 16 squares. Why not 15? Because 16 is easier. Four lots of four. Then I'd cut them out and waste one card. Well, would you write your invitations in pen? First, I'd go over it lightly in pencil. Why? I'd have to measure the card carefully to see where I want all the lettering to go. And then I'd go over it lightly in pencil. And then when I'm sure it's all in the right place, I'd go over it in felt tip. Good. I'd begun to think that maths was only about numbers. I'd forgotten how much drawing was involved too. Oh yes, making the invitations was an exercise in drawing accurately and carefully, as well as practising measurements. A sharp pencil is a must, and it's surprising how much practice it takes to have a steady hand on a ruler. And any examples of things to try at home? Well, there are heaps of greeting cards to be made, Christmas, birthdays, thank yous, and so on. Or how about making your own board for a game like drafts or snakes and ladders? It would be hard to draw a circle because it's round. Some shapes are easy. Pentagon, octagon. It's great making models and things, but sometimes it can be difficult. I just want to make an ordinary box. Of course I know what a triangular prism is. I don't think I can make one of those on my own. One aspect of maths which is particularly enjoyable is the making of a booty box. What's a booty box? It's a box to put your booty in. <laughs> Are we late? No. Where's Michael? Dennis didn't want him to come. Didn't you? No, it's top secret. So we got rid of him. No, we didn't. He just didn't tell him we were coming. So what's all this secrecy for, then? We want to sort out a birthday present to give him at his party. Which is why we're here. Ah, so that's what the booty box is for. Michael's present. We're not sure what to get here yet, but it'll have to be something cheap because we don't have a lot of money. So we thought we'd put whatever we get into the booty box to make it look good. Presentation, it makes all the difference. If you say so, Nadia. <laughs> all right, ready again? Yeah. Let's go. When you're next in a sweet shop, check out all the chocolate boxes. There are so many shapes and sizes. 
I think you'll be surprised just how many different types there are. What about this one? It's boring. How do you mean? Well, it's not exactly an interesting shape, is it? The chocolates are nice. <laughs> We're not talking about what's inside the box, Rocky. That's a nice one. That's an interesting shape. To interfere. But there's only one really interesting one, as far as I can see. And I bet I know which one. Me too, but I was trying to avoid that. Why? Because our aim is to make our own booty box based on one of these shapes. And the one you've got your eye on is going to be really difficult to make. How about it, kids? What a challenge, eh? Mm. Actually, it's probably not as difficult as you think. Let's have a go, shall we? Are we going to eat the chocolates first? So... To make a booty box, we must first decide on what shape it's going to be. And we've chosen one that's going to take some careful work to really make it well. Now, we need to open the box to find its net. To find its what? You'll see, Kate. First of all, we've got to open it by using a sharp knife or a pair of scissors. And you slide it very, very carefully under the stuck down edges, like this. Do with this. <laughs> Later, Rocky. Thank you. This, Kate, is the net. This is the net of this box, which is a triangle prism. So we're going to make one of those shaped boxes, are we? We are. Right. A booty box to put Michael's present in. Perfect for holding uh, felt tips or pencils. So, how do we start? Right. Any ideas? You could put this on top of a piece of card, draw around all the edges, and then cut out the shape. You could do, yes. You could measure each edge of the net, then draw it out. Mm. Onto, um, onto the card? Yeah. Cut it out and stick it together. Of course you could. If you wanted a box this long, children, but wider across so you could get more things in it, how do you think you'd... What do you do with your measurements? You could double all the measurements except the length. Then uh, draw it out then cut it out and then stick it together. You can place the net on a piece of card, draw around it and cut it out. Or you can measure all the edges and draw the same shape onto a piece of card. You can change the length or change the width. OK, let's get it drawn onto the card, shall we? Leave that there so you can see the shape. Uh, measure each side here and then draw onto the card. Because you'll want your booty box to be twice the, the width, Double all, du double all the measurements except the length. Right. Here we go, then. You need to measure in two centimetres from the edge. That's right. Give it, give it a cut it out and put it together now. Not yet. Take a look at the original net and you'll see these two extra triangles here, here. Mm -hmm. Strictly speaking, you wouldn't have these on a simple uh, geometric net. They've been put on by the chocolate manufacturers to strengthen the box. But do we need the flaps? Yes. If you don't have these, you won't be able to stick the whole thing together. And if the extra triangle wasn't here, you need an extra flap here. Right. Now you can cut it out. You Rocky. Thank you. you start us off. Okay. Can we stick it together now? Yes, but not too much glue. Nadia, you can do this for us. Thanks. Where are you going to start? Yeah. Don't forget. Right, right yeah. See. That's it. You're going to fold. Let's fold it first and we'll see how it goes. That's it. Right. So, so which, which edge are you going to, to glue? It's right, strange. along there. OK. You glue along that edge. We nearly, we nearly did it the wrong side, didn't we? Right. <laughs> um, don't forget, kids, you're going to leave one end open. You're not going to stick one end down. Why is that? So he can put his stuff inside. Right, so you can put uh, Michael's present inside it. Mm, great. All right. Do you want to put any of the other side? Go Put a little bit down there. Don't Okay. Very careful. Well done. Well 
I mean, you've done well there. Yeah. Yeah. I think it looks great. You I, can, I think. It's much cheaper to make it at home, too, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And much more fun as well than just going to buy it from a shop. That's smashing. Yeah. Well, well done. Well done. Mm. A booty box for Michael's booty. <laughs> 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 Easy, isn't it? Well, it takes a lot of time and a lot of thought, but it's fun to do. When it's finished, leave it until the glue is absolutely dry and then you can decorate it with paints or felt tips and you'll have an attractive looking booty box. Let's see how the booty box was made. Nadia, the first thing to decide upon before making a booty box. What shape you want it. And once you've chosen your shape, then what? Open up a similar box of the shape you're going to make and look at its net. Then? Lay the net on top of your own card and draw around it. Or? Measure each side of the net and then draw it onto your card. Yes. And then cut it out and stick it all together. Could you make a triangular prism, do you think? I couldn't. But I can now. I've never heard the word net used like that before. That's a good point, Kate. Part of learning any new process is learning any special words involved and what they mean. And it's important to ask if there's anything that you don't understand. Certainly. Otherwise, you can make things difficult for yourselves when they needn't be. Skipping or snakes and ladders. Skipping, uh, money games on boards. In some games, you roll the dice and count the dots. Dice have got dots in them in different patterns. Lisa has borrowed her sister's xylophone because she thought it would be nice to play Happy Birthday to Michael at his party. Well, how can, well can you play it, Lisa? I can't. You mean you can't play it at all? No. Nope. But you can read music, can't you? No, but I can learn. Music and maths. Can we link the two? Yes. Thank you, Lisa. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Three, six, nine, twelve. These numbers might make it easier for Lisa. If Lisa could read music, so much the better. But Lisa can't read music yet. And as we haven't got much time, she's going to learn the tune by a sequence of numbers. Each key on the keyboard has been numbered from the lowest note to the highest note. How will that help? Watch. Happy birthday to you. Three, three, four, three, six, five. You do it, Lisa. Well done. We are almost ready for Michael's party, but there are still one or two things we haven't talked about. Firstly, the food. Well, that's going to be done by Michael's mum. But what are we actually going to do at the party? More discussions? More aspects of maths? Yes? We're going to have a disco because my brother runs one. He does weddings and things. Right, so there's going to be a disco, but don't you want some party games too? It's buzz. Yeah. Fizz Buzz, eh? I'm sure you've played Fizz Buzz. Watch. We count around the room, and when we reach a multiple of three, we say Fizz instead of saying the number. So you'll need to know your three times table. Watch. One, two, Fizz. Four, five, Fizz. Seven, eight, Fizz. Ten, eleven, Fizz. 13, 14, fizz. 16, 17, fizz. 19, 20, fizz. 22, 23, fizz. 25, 26, fizz. 28, 29, fizz. 31, 32, fizz. 34, 35. When we reach a multiple of five, we say buzz instead of the number. And for this, you'll need to know your five times table. Watch. One, two, three, four, buzz. Six, seven, eight, nine, buzz. 
11, 12, 13, 14, buzz. 16, 17, 18, 19, buzz. 21, 22, 23, 24, buzz. 26, 27, 28, 29, buzz. 31, 32, 33, 34, buzz. Easy? Of course it is. And you can play it with any number of your choice. But you need to know your tables. Let's try two together. Fizz for the threes and buzz for the fives. We'll all do it here and you can join in. Right, let's have a go then, kids, shall we? Rocky, you can start. One, two. Fizz. Four. Buzz. Fizz. Seven. Eight. Fizz. Buzz. Eleven. Fizz. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fizz buzz. Lisa, what sort of game could we play to help us with number sequences and patterns? Fizz buzz. How would that help? You need to know your times tables so that if um, we say fizz on, say, multiples of four, you'd have to go one, two, three, fizz. Five, six, seven, fizz. Nine, ten, eleven, fizz. Right. How can music be linked with maths? Because of the sequence of the notes. Yes, similar to number patterns and sequences. Three, three, four, three, six, five. Happy birthday to you. So we've brought in a game to make practising fun. That and looking at some different sorts of patterns that are around us. More examples for mums and dads to try at home? Well, how about looking at how a tartan pattern is made up or trying out a knitting pattern? Maybe Michael would like a sweater for his birthday. What do you think, Kate? Well, I'm not at all sure about that. <laughs> you. I like collected data because it means I can go around to all my friends and ask them questions. Times the £2.75 by 4. Height, weight, length, how wide something is. Of course I know what a triangular prism is. Skipping or snakes and adders. <laughs> That was great. Where are the others? They're just coming. I thought I'd go home first to make sure everything was ready. Good idea. So, the party. Stuff in your face again, Rocky. Mm. Rocky, have we got the present? He's coming. Yeah. Happy birthday, Michael. Oh, thank you. It's from all of us. It's not much, but we made it ourselves. Great. What is it? It's a pencil box. It's got some pencils and felt tips in there for you. Your mum said to bring this in, Michael. She's getting the camera. Brilliant! Oh. Now, I wonder who's going to be clever enough to cut this into enough equal pieces. There's 15 of you lot, and your mum says she wants a bit too. 16 pieces. 16? That's easy. Michael, your mum's ready with the camera. Blow the candles out, Michael. Lydia, if I wanted to tell someone all about myself, what are the things I need to write? Your name and... Your name, yes. Um, what else? When's what your a... birthday? When's your birthday, yes. When's your birthday? In January the 16th. January the 16th, that's nice. What else could you tell them? Um, what your house looks like, what you look like. Yes. And Good. if you've got any pets. What sort of pets have you got? I've got two fish. So you tell them all about your fish. What are their names? Abigail and Oliver. Planning a celebration. First things first. The first thing to do is to collect all the data, all the information that's needed to plan Michael's birthday party. So, Michael, what have you come up with? My mum says I can have a party, um, 15 of us at home including our friends. 
but she's given us £20 so we can go somewhere else first. Like? To see a film. I want to go bowling. I don't. Well, what do you want to do, Nadia? I'd like to go swimming. Rocky? I don't mind. Swimming, I suppose. I wonder what you'd like to do. Michael's made a list of possibilities. We could go bowling, swimming, to see a film, the zoo, a picnic, or we could go for something to eat, like a burger. And we've got 15 coming of us, including our friends. So we've asked each of them what they like to do. Six possibilities and 15 people. So how are you going to find out which is the most popular choice? Make a graph. Right. Would you like to count the ducklings for me, Jerome? How many I ducklings can ducklings. you see? The ducklings with the duck, just over there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I can count eleven cows. There is four trees. One, two, three, four. How many flowers can you see here? How many cows are there? You can count the ducklings too. You couldn't count all those geese. Good evening and welcome to Spell That Word. Our competitors tonight are from all over the place. And their names are Lisa, Nadia, Rocky and Michael. And here's your quiz master, Dennis Bond. Thank you. Thank you very much and good evening. We've got some exciting words for you tonight on Spell That Word. And they're all now connected with the famous Beckwood. So without further ado, it's over to the word form. <laughs>
wait, get your mum and dad beside you for a brief message and to find out how you can get your free gift. We all have hopes and dreams for our children. We want to give them the best of all possible futures. That could mean independent schooling at the school best suited to your children's needs and talents. It could mean helping them to continue with their studies or giving them the keys to their future. With careful planning and a little expert help, these needn't be dreams. To find out more about how General Portfolio can help you provide for your children's future and to claim their free gift, return the card enclosed with this video or call free phone 0800 282848.